Okay, let's go into Buy, Rent, Burn. This is the segment of the podcast where we select three games uh, individually and we'll play them all and decide which of those games we would personally buy, rent, or burn. Up for review this episode, we've got Andy's pick, which is Knuckles Chaotix. Um, Justin has gone with The Amazing Spider-Man Web of Fire. And I've selected Calibri, and if you didn't already notice, these are all for the Sega 32X. Fantastic system add-on, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> let's go back up to the top, and we will go through each one of these games. Uh, we'll go with Andy's pick first, Knuckles Chaotix. Uh, so this was released in 1995. The description on this, Knuckles, the ed- edgiest echidna on the block, is back. This screaming wild ride's got everything but a speed limit. Race for the rings and hold on. I think I did that justice. I, they seriously printed 10 O's, just in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> uh, so what do you? What can you tell us about this gem, Andy? Uh, I it might be one of my greatest disappointments in my whole life when I. Saw this oh. for the first, first time when I and was. And you're the kid. number one Sonic fan too. I can only imagine. It. Your... It. I mean, it is. Uh, honestly, like I was a huge Knuckles fan because, like, Knuckles got onto the scene and he was like, his attitude was cranked to eleven compared to Sonic. You know. So I was a big fan of Knuckles, and when I heard that he was getting his own game, I kind of begged for a 32x. Didn't did not get one. Oh. Which is probably very good in <laughs> hindsight. <laughs> um but i did have i guess not really a friend but it's somebody i went to school with and i was over and watched him play it and wow i was really bummed out like i think even then i was disappointed even though i was like oh knuckles yeah awesome he got his own game but like playing it again now it just reaffirms like how awful that i whole idea was like (laughs) <laughs> like you're coming off of sonic which everybody loves for you know the speed and everything and just all that and it's like what if we just tied another like a boat anchor to sonic and then it sounds like a great a idea like i don't see any holes in this <laughs> <laughs> progression in gameplay i like it yeah and the And then just like periodically have that boat anger just swing around and just do random stuff as far as physics goes and like affect where you're what you're trying to accomplish in the whole level and make sure the game is like really slow too. So (laughs) that was it's unbelievable that they came to that conclusion that that was the right direction for a Sonic game for their next, you know, big franchise in that. Well, there's probably a reason it's not called Sonic Chaotix. I'm sure. (laughs) After they started developing that, they're like, yeah, we, we can't sully Sonic's name that bad. We'll wait until yeah. the uh, after Dreamcast era to do that. Yeah. So, I mean, for those that aren't aware, it's, it is like a Sonic type game, but it you, you have almost like a rubber band attached to another character that's kind of an AI. So you kind of a lot of there's like puzzle stuff and there's some stuff like that. But overall, it's it's. It just kind of slows down the game and just makes it harder, like not in a good way, you know, it just makes it annoying. Yeah, I think the description of a boat anchor attached to him fits it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like some of those jumps you have to do and you just get that guy caught on something and it completely <laughs> screws you over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit like, uh, it kind of almost reminds me a little bit of like um, at getting over it with. What's his name? Like the pickaxe is sort of the equivalent of the extra character tethered to you. Oh yeah. Knuckles chaotic where it just can completely fuck you. If it lands the wrong spot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like if Sonic game was made in co-op or something. (laughs) It's pretty bad. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's an interesting attempt on some of the different things, I guess, but I, I don't know. It, It was pretty tough on a lot of the, launching because you have to hand, have the person stand in a certain spot and then launch them yep i don't know i just couldn't get it to work right most of the time you get it luckily one time and you never get it again yeah i would love to see somebody like actually be really good at this game to see like how you control all that and make it i'm sure it's crazy 
but like you have to have like the right rhythm to everything i would think so you're saying it's not the uh, premier 32x experience that it was cracked up to be (sighs) no and honestly like this might be where sonic kind of started cracking a little bit uh (laughs) this is where (laughs) a lot of sonic's friends started showing up they're like oh what if we just invite all you know a shit ton of random characters in you know <laughs> that's kind of where this all started <laughs> that reminds like it, me. it worked for knuckles we invited knuckles let's just invite like 10 more guys other than vector the alligator i'm totally on board for that guy i mean that guy's cool but <laughs> just reminds me of like that i think there was like two episodes back on retro knots they were like we're, today we're talking about sonic and all his dumbass friends <laughs> <laughs> it was like the introduction, but it's like, it is true. It's like, you were right. Like Knuckles Chaotix introduced the just like smorgasbord of like shitty B characters that they've been shoving down our throat ever since. Pretty much. Yeah. There's still like, even when you play, when you play the uh, mm-hmm. Sonic Generations game, they'll be like, oh, hey, it's the Chaotix team. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know what I found like, out that I didn't know? Did you know they murder Big the Cat in the background of Sonic Adventure 2? Like, they li- if you watch right, they literally show him getting run over by a truck, which I didn't really, realize. Huh. It's kind of awesome. At least corrected some <laughs> mistakes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now that we've wandered down the rabbit hole, any, any final thoughts on uh, Knuckles Chaotix? Uh, it's just it's just a massive disappointment other than like you could tell that they're like hey look we have scaling now like (laughs) compared to like the genesis that really didn't have that they scale a ton of sprites in this game (laughs) so just to show that off i think that was their showpiece but overall it yeah not a good uh display for first party sega on that (laughs) all right so on to Justin's pick, The Amazing Spider-Man, Web of Fire. This came out in 1996. Description on this one, a massive electrical plasma grid is shrouded New York City in a blanket of hysteria and destruction. Skyscrapers are crumbling. Civilians are frying. It's only a matter of time before the Big Apple becomes the Baked Apple. (laughs) Ayo! Yes! What can you tell us about this one, Justin? Well, I picked it because it had the amazing in it. <laughs> it's deceiving. Um, you gotta watch out really for know. that. Yeah, David I didn't know Crane's amazing expect. Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it it really wasn't that great. Um, it's a what side scrolling, I suppose, beat 'em up type. Um, you do have standard Spider-Man. You get you can swing on your web and tie up the enemies and stuff. Um. The fighting, I didn't think, was very good at all um, as far as movement and actually getting near them to attack them, which was kind of a disappointment. Um, the, I pretty much just swung over an, every enemy I could, so I didn't have to try to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when you get to the bosses, I don't know, I struggled with that as well. I don't think I actually even beat the first boss, but um, it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> I don't really have a whole lot to say about it other than <laughs> it's not amazing. <laughs> yeah, I have to completely agree. <laughs> that was for for you know, like Spider Man, you think of like being like the ultimate almost like an acrobat as far as fighting. And like you play that game and it's just like he's he's punching and he's got the lowest like arm reach imaginable. <laughs> I guess you can shoot like webs to be like, sit the, you know, sit still over there while I come after you and punch you. And even like the first two punches don't quite reach them yep. because like, I'm like, well, this should reach them, but it doesn't. <laughs> the thing with that too, like there'll be a guy behind the guy that you just tied and he'll shoot through his <laughs> yeah. enemy friend. And I don't know. It was just frustrating with that too. Well, technically yeah. you could shoot a bullet through your friend into another guy, right? I mean, that seems pretty, right. that's like some amazing real life physics right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Only the power of the, the 32X could again. do that for you. <laughs> you shoot a web, you tap the first guy, the second web should go through that guy, right? Yeah. It's only fair. <laughs> yeah. It is weird though, like how there was, there was like this track record of 
nobody could make a good Spider-Man game until like the PlayStation 2 Spider-Man games. Like just years of failed trash. Yeah, oh, well, the PS1 ones were pretty good, but yeah, I have to agree. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. The one that, They were all pretty bad. There was the one that was like PS1 and Dreamcast, right? That was pretty solid. Yep. Um, this one's got some weird graphics. It's almost like uh, Donkey Kong Country, like pre-rendered. It's got good animation, I guess. That's that's something. <laughs> but it kind of looks like Play-Doh-y, you know, kind of Play-Doh-ish type of graphics. Because they have that like lighting fake lighting 3d stuff like that but you have to appreciate how the 32x showcased graphics that could just happen without like a stupid attachment to your super nintendo right <laughs> yeah. really justifies your purchase <laughs> yeah exactly oh uh, yeah that was that was not great there was uh at least there's some cameos from like other superheroes in there so that's kind of cool but i think if they would have like you said the punching if they would have extended the arm reach just a little bit more, or made yep. it easier to do jumping attacks, mm-hmm. it would have been actually a pretty good game. But I don't know if I'd give it pretty good. It would have been a better game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my high It's a praise. sad thing when he runs... <laughs> it's really sad that Spider-Man runs faster than Knuckles. Like the Sonic <laughs> game does. Like, <laughs> Well, he doesn't have somebody else bungeed to him, so you know that probably helps. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe if you would have, it would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go on to the final pick. My pick, um, Calibri. So deep in the earth, this is the description. I all this came out in 1995. I should touch on that. So description: deep in the earth, powerful ancient crystal hums, fueling the balance of nature. But when its toxic twin plummets to earth, nature totters on the edge of extinction. Only one hope survives, Calibri. Though small and alone, the hummingbird must battle the invasive mutation in all its malignant form to restore Earth. Man, I'm (laughs) struggling to read big words today, people. (laughs) So, (laughs) in all its malignant form to restore Earth, but at what cost? Question mark. Okay. So we have combination of uh i guess a green game they're they trying to push like um environmentalism on us too but basically calibri i don't know how you really describe it. it it sort of boils down to uh a shooter where you control a hummingbird because reasons the reasons that it listed there um i don't think i've ever seen another game like this and there's probably a reason for that, <laughs> that this thing has mm-hmm. sort of stayed <laughs> on the 32X. Uh, it seems like when people talk about the 32X, Calibri is like one of those games where like, no, you have to get it. Probably because we're comparing it to like the 20 other just god awful games that came out. <laughs> um, I don't know. What did you guys think of this one? I can't believe this was released here. Like I could see this totally being a Japanese game, but like, like the marketing plan that Sega had going here and then be like, Yo, you're a hummingbird. Figure it out. Because, like, the beginning of the game is, like, it's not action-packed. You're not shooting anything. You're just a hummingbird, and you're, like, getting bullied by all the other bees and hummingbirds, and you kind of have to, like, figure it out on how you get your powers. But once you do it, it's kind of a letdown, too, as far as the shooter goes. But <laughs> I guess it looks nice. So you got that. <laughs> Honestly, when I played it, I, I seriously thought I was just playing hunting, Hummingbird Simulator. <laughs> like, I literally just flew around trying to dodge the bees and get to the flower. And then I would get trapped in the corners. And you'd have to do that little burst. Yeah. A couple times and you get out. <laughs> he kept trapping me in the corners. Um, there was the, like, the little power-up shield things that I found. And then... Um, there's one other thing too, but I don't know. Overall, I didn't really get to where it was a shooter. Yeah, yeah. It, those the other hummingbirds are just a bunch of bullies in that game. So, and I don't think you can take it out on them afterwards either. They're still just a jerk down there. So, so the moral of the story is hummingbirds are assholes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hummingbirds, nature's asshole. <laughs> All right. 
So, a little bit of description on all the games there. Why don't we go back up through and we'll give our picks on whether we would buy, rent, or burn each game, respectively. Uh, Andy, why don't you kick things off? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> 32. Uh, I'll buy Tempo and then I'll burn the rest. Is that, can I do that? Totally. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we, that's pretty much the only good 32X game I've played. I guess there's a few others. Star Wars is pretty good. Doom, obviously. But uh, <laughs> if I have to stick to these games, oh uh, boy. I think I'm going to do Spider Man for my body. Spider Man buy. wins! Exactly. <laughs> That's a bad inside joke, everybody. <laughs> And the reason I'm picking to buy it is because half the time you can just swing over the whole level and not play it. <laughs> the best way to enjoy the game is not to play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think that one had like the most at least uh, there was just a few issues that make it from being a, a pretty decent game overall. So I think that that in itself does it. Um, my rent is going to be Calibri. Uh, it's it's an interesting shooter, you know, obviously being a hummingbird, all that stuff. Nice backgrounds, nice art. But the shooting itself, like, uh, it just was not that good. <laughs> and it's kind of like free from, freeform shooting, kind of like Fantasy Zone and a couple others like that. But it it's it's a little bit rough. And the power-ups are not good. A lot of them are like burst. And I hate burst shooting in shooter games, but and my burn is going to be knuckles. Oh, sad I, day. I know. <laughs> I it, it. I thought for sure, like, oh, maybe I was just like expecting something else back then, but no, it's it's legitimately bad. Like, maybe if you took that game and you rebranded it as something else and like made it seem like it's slow you know like take all the templates out that are like loops and all that shit that make sonic look cool and just turn it into like you know a slow platformer maybe but if you brand it as a sonic game like it's it's a bad attempt yeah there's an, there's sure. an expectation of what the game is going to be yeah nice so justin how about you um well since i have to stick with these games um, I'm honestly going to buy Knuckles. Oh. Um, I, <laughs> I don't think it's that great a game. It's just entertaining the shit that you get into because the other guy doesn't follow you. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I think that justifies the reason to buy that game over the other two. <laughs> um, I'm going to rent Spider-Man just because I don't think I could sit there and play it all the time but as a rental like sit down and play it you know for a couple days or whatever try to get as far as i can which isn't very far i i think that one would fit the rental category for me on that one um Calibri, i honestly i don't know what i'm doing in that game <laughs> <Fun. laughs> you realize you were a bird and you're like fuck this i'm done <laughs> yeah i was kind of like when i tried to play farming simulator like it wasn't fun <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna burn that one. Nice. I did, I don't know the last time I yelled at my TV so much about with <laughs> knuckles, like yelling at the guy, just like you're on a platform above, and this other guy is like tethered to you, and he's just hanging out below you, and he's like, <laughs> "Well, what do we do now?" And it's like, God damn it! <laughs> you just run back and forth, and the guy just follows you, hanging there. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> And the oh. one button too, you push it and the guy like goes towards the screen and then comes back onto your platform. You blow him. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a interesting buy rent burn for sure. <laughs> well, at least we know we don't have to revisit the thirty two X, right? Yeah. <laughs> if this is the cream I, of the I mean, crap, we pretty much dead right. them all. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> 